Hey guys, just a quick little vlog. Somebody sent me a question about some uh, some PHP, some of the code how it was rendering in the chapter 12 of my uh, PHP course where they're doing a login project. There's a typical error warning message out there in PHP world called undefined index. And uh, I'm not gonna get into the details here, but the principle and the coding strategy I want to convey in this video is that it is commonplace that as a developer, you're going to be working through all kinds of little smallish, uh, we even call it a bug in this situation. Well, you, you're going to be working with tons of bugs. I forget the data, but I've seen data showing that you spend much more time debugging than anything else in software development. That's why I'm, everybody uses uh, web frameworks and libraries to help avoid bugs as much as possible. Why? Because if you have, you know, 500 coders who's contributed to a library's uh, code base, and you've had thousands, if not tens of thousands of users who have used it and submitted bug reports, uh, you can have a much cleaner code than you would otherwise. So yeah, that's why you want to use libraries. But anyway, so uh, what I want to convey in this particular video is that it is common for developers to have errors and have to go to Google and type in those error messages, which is probably these days going to take you to Stack Overflow. And uh, therein, you're going to start finding answers. This is part of the training process, by the way, to learn to do Google. So in my curriculum where I'm teaching code, what the schools use, uh, I provide a whole bunch of uh, projects, offline projects, if you will, uh, that uh, teachers assign to their uh, students. And for the university students especially, one of the assignments is to go in there and uh, it requires that they, the students go out there, go to Stack Overflow or go to Google or whatever site and figure out and solve error problems on their own and start to learn how to do that. One of the things I teach actually right from the very beginning in my courses is that once you get a piece of code to work, whether whether it is JavaScript uh, or uh, Python or PHP or SQR or whatever, then I say, break it. Break it yourself. Rearrange the parameters uh, in, in the wrong order or something like that, whatever it happens to be. But you break it in a deliberate way, in, in a different ways, so that you can see the errors that uh, the code that you just broke. You want to see what the errors, what, they're gen what they generate. You do this enough, you're going to start understanding the error messages much, much, much more easily, much more quickly, which will allow you to identify what's causing errors in your code, and it's going to be allow you to uh, write your software much more quickly, and it's a lot less frustrating that way. So yeah, breaking uh, your code and creating errors on purpose just to learn and see what the errors are being, what errors are being generated is. A learning tactic that you should implement and number two you should also learn to look up things on your own using the power of the Google we are so lucky these days to have Google to have sites like Stack Overflow and a whole bunch of other sites because uh, you get all these minutia all these answers to all these little minutia bugs and problems configuration issues um, uh, in the old days, back in the 90s, the Google was not around, and the search engines, you search for anything, you would just get pornography. You search for mouse, and you would get some sort of weird porn. Um, so, yeah, we're lucky today that you have very good search engines, and you can pull out uh, the answer to any bugs and error warnings and messages you may be getting, regardless of the language. So, there you go. Yeah. Embrace error messages, understand them, learn to look them up on Google. I think that's the general uh, message of this particular video. I hope you found it useful. A little nerd tip 